Well, it's the finals. I'm very surprised, but very happy to make it here. I've got a big match ahead of me with Robert. Fantastic guy. Really looking forward to seeing how this one goes today. Just going to give it my best shot and see how it goes. Kill that fucking nerd. All right. No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know this is where I'm usually loud and boisterous, but Kelly's a ray of sunshine. How could you not, you not enjoy being around her? It's great. N Nazario? Yeah. Tony? Yeah. Payson? Yeah. Me? What do yeah. we all have in common? We're, we're, we're male. Oh, okay. I was going to say beards, but I don't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it, she could be known as the fun DMC killer. She could be known mm. as a murderer. I assume Kelly doesn't mm. want to be known as a murderer because of her sunny disposition, but she could be. She. I mean, she is a continuous source of joy in these leagues. So, oh, wait, this is Australian. Cunt, 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 cunt. So that's not getting beeped out this one time. Thank you. That's it for me. Dude, knock him dead. You have fun. Thanks, buddy. Let's go. That was an intro. Hello, Scully. What's up? Assholes. Welcome to Ontel. Contender match. Haven't had one of these in a while. I think I think this is our first like formal tournament ever. Mm -hmm. Just saying it all the way through and having no like retirements or people pulling out or like surprise triple threats to make up for something. It's great to see. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Kelly and Robert both on rampages towards the finals, both unstoppable, both unstoppable trains, uh, trains is, is a, I don't know. I am exhausted uh, right now. So yeah. let's say we just get right in, into the match. So what I'm hearing is uh, if I make jokes, you won't tell me they're bad because you're too tired too. It's going to be a great yeah, day. Probably. Introducing first with a record of five wins and zero defeats with two technical knockouts, it is the number seven seed, uh, Mad Madam Mim Kelly Meehan, number one Australian. Oh. Say it again. Say the no defeats word again. This might be the last time. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. And her with, with a record of five wins and zero defeats, also with two TKOs, the number five seed, the ghost, Robert Kastner. Like looking in a mirror, <laughs> but not really. Players, this is how it works. You will get uh, 10 questions in a variety of movie trivia categories. After I ask the question, you will write it down on your whiteboard. After the 20 seconds, you will present your answer and speak it. Each correct answer is worth a point. If you get all 10 correct, you get a bonus question at the end of the round, also worth a point. Uh, you have three repeats and one challenge for the duration of this match. Do either player have any questions? Not. No. All right, with that, Skull, you can give him the first question. First question comes in crime. Which 1988 crime film stars Kurt Russell... Michelle Pfeiffer and Mel Gibson. What a trio that is. I like one of these people a lot. I'll suppose I really quickly that is Kurt Russell. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea you were such a Mel Gibson fan. No, stop it. <laughs> Kurt Russell's a gorgeous man and starred the greatest film of all time, Sky High. Five, four, three, two. One, hands down. Uh, Kelly? Escape from New York. And Robert. Tequila Sunrise? Tequila Sunrise is correct. Early one, nothing lead for Robert. Yep, your next question comes to the category of the 1970s. Turner works for what organization in Three Days of the Condor? Is the condor, condor, your 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 favorite bird? Uh, I prefer the vulture, but specifically the one voiced by Will Arnett and Horton Hears a Who. Ooh, that's yeah. not bad actually. He's like vaguely Russian. It's a lot of fun. Five, mm -hmm. four, three, two, one. Robert, CIA, and Kelly, CIA, both correct. Yeah, they on the board. All right, third question. Quotes. In what film will you hear the quote, hack the planet? <laughs> Very wonder topical. Why, wonder why uh, this came up. We can have some fun. Even in like these higher, like these pressure matches, like we can, 
we get some we get them fun questions. I feel like Bill I is going. That. I, I feel like Bill is going that like absolutely nuts. Bad, bad yeah, these are definitely. He definitely lives by a code that these movies follow <laughs> for sure. But is it Hack the Planet for? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hack two, the Planet. <laughs> Can't wait. Hackers. And Robert. Hackers. Both correct. <laughs> Your next question comes in the category of classics. What mode of transportation is 1938's The Lady Vanishes set on? The Lady Vanishes, otherwise known as All of My Relationships. <laughs> I was going to call it uh, the movie Ethan Beller starred in The Woman in the Window, uh, which I don't think a lot of people like know, but like. Is it like Bar and Creed 2? Is he just like barely there or is it more I common? think he was a PA or like a boom operator or something. Like he worked on the film. I just don't know what he did. We said hi to Amy Adams, so I am extremely jealous of him. Five, four, three, two, one. Robert? Is that a boat? And Kelly. Trying. Tie game. Kelly's correct. Yeah. All right. Your next question in musicals. What branch of, of the military are Joe and Clarence from in Anchors Away? Away spelled with the weird, like, E-I-G-H. I mean, that's how it's spelled in the title, unless it's an I-E, because I don't know how English works. And this movie was actually written by horses because Away spelled the same as Nay. Okay, horses but like, nay. you know the rule I before E except after C? That's most of the time it's actually the wrong version. It's like, yeah. Except if it sounds like A, like Neighbors Away. So this yeah, is right then. Good. Fuck yeah. Thank that's you, subtitles. Simpsons. That's what the Simpsons taught me. Three. Amongst many others. Two. One. Kelly. The Navy. And Robert. I assume it's the Navy. In the Navy is correct. Okay. Next question comes in Oscars. Name two of the four films the English patient beat for best picture. Uh, I just realized this question for me. Oh. Well, you gave me the first question, so this is your fault. I wanted to give you, like, a... I thought you'd like Tequila Sunrise. Like, knowing nothing about it, I'd be like a you. I've never had a, te a Tequila Sunrise, so I wouldn't know. It's my dad's, like, favorite drink. That Other than, like, a Long Island. Your tequila. dad's favorite drink? Oh, yeah. Interesting. When I say mine's, are, like, my favorite is Screaming Grass. I probably think some weird. Just so weird. Four. Three. I'll take a repeat. Two. All right, Robert's first repeat. Name two of the four films the English patient beat for best picture. Okay, but a screaming grasshopper is creme de menthe, white creme de cacao, and milk and shook it up. So it's, it's like a uh, like a mint milkshake. Oh, I have really no good. doubt it's good. It's weird that that's your favorite, though. I don't like mm. hard liquor. Because like, it's like, like, that, that, that shouldn't even be counted as an alcoholic drink. It's it's basically a dessert. With, you saw with me down blue water. Hawaiians in Iowa. Like it's just it's 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 nice and. All right, we're, we're not even going to jump into that. <laughs> Three, two, one. Robert did not. I said shine a casino. I know that's wrong. And Kelly couldn't think of anything. So shine is correct. The other three are Jerry Maguire, Fargo, and Secrets and Lies. My freaking god, Fargo. All right, your next question in action adventure. How are Babe and the deceased Doc related in Marathon Man? They're not in the city, unfortunately, uh, but they are also not pigs. That's where I thought that was going. <laughs> <laughs> we had it in test. I was like, wait, what is Wait, is what? Not a pig? What the fuck? <laughs> How much did Nazario pay you to say that? Uh, I don't know, but I am getting some sort of, like, package later this week. Could be a head. Five. Four. Three. Is it one of his priceless toys? <laughs> Kelly. Siblings. And Robert. Is it brother and sister? We can accept, I think we can accept siblings. <laughs> yeah, we can accept, so we they're both brother men, sister. unfortunately. They're, they're so it's not brother and sister. Makes sense. So we'll accept Kelly's and she takes a 5-4 lead. Yes. Going into the next question of animated. In 2003's Tokyo Godfathers, 
How many homeless people parent the abandoned child? Is this like uh, There Will Be Blood? Where they're all like, I've abandoned my child. Uh. <laughs> I can't say anything because I haven't seen. I've, I've never even heard of this movie. Dude, it, 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 it almost won Best Picture. Like No Country for Old Men was like close, but like it was it was there, you know. Five, uh huh. Four, three, two, one. Robert. Six. And Kelly. Wild guess three. Three is correct. Your next question. It's relatively big. Which Oscar-nominated actor made his made his directorial debut with 2014's Lost River? Hmm. I wanted to add like another hint to this, but I'm like, that's not really going to help anyone. So let's just hang out with a movie that exists. Ooh. If you directed a movie, what would it be called, and would you be nominated for an Oscar? Buck Naked, and no, not an Oscar. Did they catch you buck naked, chilling on the bathroom floor? Oh. Five, four, three, two, one. Kelly. Can't say Fred Linkerpa. And Robert. Is it Daniel Day-Lewis? Both incorrect link for Ryan Gosling. Ah. His the band Goss. also wrote the music for it. That's the only thing that's like, fun fact. It's the Goss father himself. <laughs> And your last question in this round comes in non-U.S. films. 2013's Gloria was remade into what film that stars Julianne Moore? Gloria. I don't, I don't know why I'm singing that song. It's uh, I think that was covered on Glee, right? Maybe. Yeah, Rachel will sing it. I'll I'll sing it. I, I don't know why I'm not saying Tanner. I know it's from the St. Louis. Oh, no, baby. It was in the cafe. It was in the diner. Yeah. That's what I need to rewatch season five. It's ass pressure to watch, anyways. Five. Four. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Three. I two, want Bill to watch one episode of Glee and see what he thinks. Robert. Still Alice. And Kelly. Alice is still Alice. Both in part looking for Gloria Bell. Okay. We'll think Gloria. Yeah. Uh, so with that, we're going to round two. Kelly has the lead six to four. Do you have that as well, Scully? I do, I do. All right, so now we go to uh, round two. Round two is known as the deep cut round. Before this match, each player picked a movie for their opponent to study. They will receive five questions of both the chosen films. A correct answer for their own film is worth one point. However, a correct answer for their opponents is worth two. Uh, Kelly, since you are in the lead, would you like questions from your film first or second? I'll take my film first. All right, with that, uh, I feel like I'm connected to this film in an interesting way, so I'll yeah, give you. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. yeah. So we will be going to bed knobs and broomsticks Just don't first. say the word. And, all right, your first question. When Professor Brown is doing his demonstration in the street, what is specifically inside the frame which he breaks? And we need a specific thing he says is within the frame. Yeah. So back to Glee, uh, I want to bring back my watch along series, but just to give Bill like an episode of Glee a week and do a podcast about it. And it's just making him question his sanity more and more over the, I think like 200 episodes. You're playing a dangerous game. I like pain. Five. I like four, pain. Try three, wearing a call set. Two. One. Uh, Kelly. Unprepared glass. And Robert. But unprepared window glass. So the answer is window. It's just, it's just window glass. So I don't think we can accept either of those. I haven't seen either, so I'm not going to consult on that. I'm. Can I bring in my manager? Yeah. Yes, you may. Hold on. Yeah. Bill, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's. He mentions it's unprepared for the purpose of making them know that it's. He hasn't altered it in any way. Okay. So. I'm willing to do this challenge. I feel pretty confident about it. And you guys did say specific thing, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's also kind of strange that both you and Gilly kind of said the same thing. So I would say, yeah, go for it. All right, I'm going to challenge. All right, we'll go to the challenge. We'll be right back. All right, so we reviewed the film. Uh, or at least the structure of the question allows for, while they had a specific answer, 
we were at, we were looking for a different kind of specific, but because they still gave a specific answer that was correct in the structure of the film, both keep their both get the points for this question, which means Robert also gets to keep his challenge. So now to your second question. What possession of Miss Price's does Professor Brown dance with when she brings the inanimate objects to life? So Scully, what are your thoughts on Glee? Some of the music's good and there's some good performances, but it's just trash altogether. It's just Unfair. trash. The only cover uh, two Taylor Swift songs, and they're both some of the best covers in the show. Five, Gross. four, three, two, one. Robert? Or Nightgown. And Kelly? Nightgown. Both correct. When the group first arrives underneath Nambu, Nambumbu, Professor Brown gives Miss Price a flower with what kind of sea creature in it? Am I lagging or is Scully lagging? I'm th I think I'm lagging. I don't think you're lagging. I don't think e either of us are lagging. Oh, my connection is just pretty. I need a new computer. This one's a little bit like dying on me. I need a new one too. Hmm. We, we started to go fund me, you know, to like really raise money for everything that we've done. For <laughs> we'll do it through merch sales, actually. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Kelly? Seahorse. And Robert. It whinnies, so I assume it's the seahorse. Both correct. Nay. Uh, your fourth question. King Leonidas tells his secretary, Bert, wait, sorry. King Leonidas tells his secretary, Bird, if there's one thing they like, it's what? Yeah, so I've never seen this, and I'm very confused. You've never seen it. Kelly, do you remember the match we played together? Of course I know, you said it was it. Nazis, but I thought you might have corrected it by then. <laughs> I, I was going to watch it, and then I decided to watch the films for the other match. I'm Spence is just so convinced that, that the film is about Nazis. And they're, I, they're not I thought which was too easy of a guess, so I went harder, and it's in a World War II. There are <laughs> Nazis in it. There are. Boom. <laughs> they're at the end. <laughs> Five, four. And the painting at the beginning. Two. Uh, drawings. Robert. Volunteers. And Kelly. Volunteers. Both correct. And your last question: What does one of the knights do during the final battle? That terrifies a German soldier after it's shot at. I think you would mean? love, you would love like the final battle between the objects and the German soldiers because it's 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 really cool. Would you know what fandom film I should watch first? I should watch Sky High for the fiftieth time because that's a perfect. I hate you. I hate you so much. Even though it's not in fandom anymore, what the fuck, Tim? Fuck wad. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, damn. Kelly. Takes its helmet off. And Robert. Oh, I said empties bullets out of its helmet. I feel this question is a little misleading, confusing, because, like, there's a part where a guy gets scared because a, a guy does take his helmet off, uh, takes its helmet off and empties bullets out, and then there's this one. But the guy stands still and he hits him over the head. So I'm, I feel like it's a little misleading with question. All right. And I mean, I don't know if I should use the challenge for this or not. To at least maybe get a backup question or potentially, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, worked out once before. Why not? All right. I'm going to challenge that the question is a bit misleading based on how it's described. All right, we will uh, check out that challenge. We'll be right back. All right, we reviewed the challenge. I haven't seen the movies. I'm going to let Scully take this one. So the the, the challenging question was, um, uh, Robert said that there was a scene where a knight empties bullets out of, of his helmet. That that was his answer. There was no such moment um, in the film. He empties bullets out of his boots, uh, which was the answer that we had. So unfortunately, both Robert and Kelly will not be getting the points for their answer. All right. Uh, with that, both hit four questions in this film. So uh, Robert is up 
12 to 10? Yeah, yes. Okay, and with that, we'll go to Kelly's film. Or not, Robert's film, sorry. Robert's Star film. Trek 6, The Undiscovered Country. I'm tired. All right, your first question. What quadrant is the Excelsior supposed to be completing their mission in when they discover Praxis has exploded? I'm going to retweet Phil in the chat. <laughs> another broom six does sound pretty fucked. I liked it. It was good. I mean, you picked it, so I'd assume so. It's I did not the, pick it, but I enjoyed it. It is one of the best Star Trek films. Mm -hmm. That's why we picked it for for fandom. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying bed knob sounds fucked. Oh, oh bed knob. No. Oh, yeah. But it's great. It's fine. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Robert? Beta Quadrant. And Kelly? Beta Quadrant. Both correct. There we go. Your next question. According to Spock, the painting in his quarters is a reminder to him of what? Have you seen of the Star Trek movies? I think you would really enjoy this one. You would really, really enjoy this one. I think this is the one where I was fake logging for match against Kirk in Warzone. Like, I need at least one hot ticket. I think I gave this one, like, either really high or really low reviews just to show Kirk that, like, I have shitty opinions, so I didn't fake this. Mm. Interesting. Didn't work. Five, four, three, two, one. Kelly? All things come to an end. And Robert. All things come to an end. Both correct. Your next question. Martia tells Kirk to go to Lift 7 for what job if he wants to escape Rurapenthe? Uh, if you could discover a country, what would it be? Uh, Nemboo-boo. <laughs> Good choice. I want to There's discover no candy. There's no allowed. Mm -hmm. Licorice and gumdrop, gum, gumdrop forests. Where you go back a base. Yeah. <laughs> Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Robert? Mining duty. And Kelly? Mining duty. Both correct. All right. Your next question. What title does Spock hold within Starfleet, which is mentioned during the meeting at the start of the film? Hmm. You hold, yeah, you hold two titles, three titles, actually. Yes, if you count sports. Yeah, I mean, why are we not counting sports? I mean, it's the best division. So uh, good. With all those tennis so good questions. It, so good, it just had to end. Yeah. You, you're going out on top with an undefeated champion. Five, four, three. Repeat. All right, Robert, second repeat. Um, I'm oh, sorry. What title does Spock hold within Starfleet, which is mentioned during the meeting at the start of the film? You know what the best Star Trek movie is? First Contact. No. Yes. This one is better than First Contact. It has the dad from fucking that 70s show. It's perfect. Don Siegel, I think. Five, Wait, you mean <laughs> Kurtwood Smith? Kurtwood Smith? Two, one. No, no, no. Uh, fucking Laura day. Prefont's dad. Oh. Uh, Kelly. First Lieutenant. And Robert. Is it Ambassador to Gorkin? It's the Federation Special Envoy. That's what it is. All right, your last question. When the large creature approaches Kirk inside Rurapenthe and asks for, he asks for his coat and his obedience to what group? I have to look up who this guy is so I don't like, so I'm not entirely insane. Because, like, I, I'm always happy, like, oh, shit, Nikki the Nose, you're that dad. And I just get Don Stark, that's his name, Don Stark. Great man. Cool father. Not the best, but like decent. Uh, Bill, you don't like, you want to know where, where Rathacon ranks my Star Trek ranking? Uh oh. Five, four. Rathacon is the second best Star Trek film. One. Nah. Robert. Brotherhood of Aliens. 
and Kelly. Brotherhood of Aliens. Both correct. Nearly wrote Brotherhood of Mutants. <laughs> <laughs> I have 18 to 16 in favor of Kelly. Yeah, I, I messed up the math on my board. Yeah, 18 to 16. All right, with that, we now go into round three. Round three is known as the IMDb round. You'll receive three questions at a variety of point values. We will ask you to guess the film. For three, for two points, we give you the year release, lead actor, and genre of the film. For three points, we give you the year release, director, and plot keywords. And for five big points, you will get the year, and you can pick two. Between director, actor, supporting actor, genre, plot keywords. Kelly, since you are in the lead, would you like questions from set one or set two? Set one, please. All right. Uh, Robert, I'll give you your questions in set two. Uh, for two points, your year is 1988. Your lead actor is Michael Keaton, and your genres are comedy, fantasy, and horror. Beetlejuice. Just say it once, so we're good. That's good. Yeah, I, I was going to make a joke, but I didn't want to. Tie game. All right, we'll go over to Kelly first for her two-pointer. Your year is 2005. Your actor is Steve Carell, and your genres are comedy and romance. The 40 year old virgin? Correct, two points. Back to Robert for three points. Your year is 1992. Your director is Danny DeVito, and your plot keywords are disappearance, organized crime, and labor union. Hoffa. That is correct for three points. And the lead. All right, Kelly, here comes your three. Your year is 1985. The director is John Houston, and your plot keywords are crime syndicate, Fell, fall in love and assassins. I couldn't hear that year, hon. Sorry, can you say that again? Year is 1985. Your director is John Houston, and your plot keywords are crime, a syndicate, fall in love, and assassins. Three, two, one. Frankie and Johnny. Incorrectly for Prizzy's Honor. Mm. Jack Nicholson movie. Yes. All right, so we're to Kelly for her five. The year is 1978, and you can choose between director, actor, supporting actor, genre, and plot keywords. Actor and keywords, please. Okay, here we go. Your year is 1978. Your actor is Gregory Peck, and your plot keywords are neo Nazis, jungle, and cloning. Repeat the question. Okay. Your year is 1978. Your actor is Gregory Peck, and your plot keywords are neo Nazis. Jungle and cloning. Five. Repeat the question. All right, second repeat. Your year is nineteen seventy eight. Your actor is Gregory Peck. Your plot keywords are neo Nazis, jungle, and cloning. Sorcerer. And your winner, the ghost, Robert Kastner, looking for the boys from Brazil. All right, with that, we'll jump into post-match interviews, starting with Kelly. Kelly, you played a really good game. You can't believe most yeah. of the time just round three wasn't in your favor. Uh, no. Oh, doing good. Put up my best effort. Was happy to be leading the way through, but it just really does come down to the end. I just 
didn't didn't have that this time. That's okay. Robert played fantastic as well. He kept pace the whole way. It was really close. Definitely kept me on my toes the whole way through. And I've never had that sort of back and forth right at the end. So the pressure was on. Um, yeah, had a great game. Yeah. Um... You, you had an amazing run. I know you always like undersold yourself on the way here, but the fact that you're able to get five and one in your rookie season is just phenomenal. Uh, this is the end of the season for you, but I just want your thoughts on like, how do you feel like what you've accomplished so far? Oh, I'm, I'm very grateful for having the opportunities that I've had here. Um, I'm grateful for everyone here at opening night and or everyone I've played along the way. I've just had a really great time. It's been a fun confidence boost and yeah, just, just enjoyed it. Looking forward to next season. Terrified for next season because I think that means my record is puts me up against some very difficult people, but it should be good. It is. Yeah. Um, you are <laughs> in the top five somewhere. I don't know where exactly. Oh, goodness. I, <laughs> It'll be a little bit before you come back, but when you do, is there anyone who you do want to play? Uh, no. <laughs> Whoever, whoever's kicking around that time, whoever's got similar record. I don't want to throw out names and bring bad karma my way. <laughs> whoever's, whoever's going. All right. You played great. Take a rest. Thank we'll see you next year. Thank you. And uh, going on to play his teammate in the title match, Robert Kastner. How you doing? Um, first of all, Give it all up to Kelly. Kelly did an amazing job. Um, I know probably if you looked at brackets, me versus her in the finals probably would have been in like 5% or under. I'm probably even overselling it there. But she was incredible. I definitely thought she had me. I, I played a shit first round. And um, I'm a little bit angry at myself for that. And I missed two questions in deep cuts, which I don't usually do. But, you know, I feel good. I mean, I, I never got to win a tournament. So the idea of winning a tournament is like amazing to me and winning six in a row is cool. So, um, you know, it's, it's all gravy, honestly. I do think actually, um, when Jake lost to Boatman, lost out of the Boatman, he ended five and one. So you are above where he started this season. So does that make you feel anything? Apparently in Ontel, that's what I can do because I was, <laughs> I also in geek, uh, went four and zero, which Joe hadn't done, and then Joe stopped, and then Joe didn't stop me. Joe beat me in the finals, so maybe that's self fulfilling prophecy. But whatever. <laughs> I guess I'll save the big question, Bill. How did you feel about your how, how about your player today? I mean, how how else can I feel? He played great. I mean, you were down in round one, but you never got swayed. You just kept rolling with it. Mm. Well, should you still didn't go your way, but you just kept kept pace. So if I may, if I may bring in a quote here uh, from uh, one of the greatest bands that ever lived, Fugazi, uh, from their album In on the Kill Taker. Uh, the song Cassavetes, and the quote is, uh, Crush, my calm, you Cassavetes. I was sitting tight, so quiet, quiet. In the dark till the lights came up, my heart beating like a riot, riot. I know you're all thinking, what the hell does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Kick-ass and... song, though. Yeah, let's go. You and Jake. Civil War, but not really because you guys are still friends. Good question. Are you ready for that match? If I re no. I mean, if I can't put – I have to put the effort I did with Mark and be better than I was in that match. I cannot do what I did here and expect to beat somebody of Jake's caliber. I, mean, what, I, I anticipate that this will go poorly for me. However, I got to this point. And it'll be fun because I get to play Jake. Um, this is one of those, like, when we did fandom with Knights of Round. I would like to get to round five. That's my goal. Everything else, it doesn't matter. I will offer you this one recommendation. Don't give him cats. Okay. It is I'm an option dead. if you want. Do uh, not do that. Do not do <laughs> that. Time. Trust me. I speak from experience. It got ugly. Okay. Yeah. Take a long rest. Great for, the, for, for a massive match. Can't wait to see you there. Oh, so, shit, sorry. <laughs> we got a title match coming, and I'm, mm, yeah, I'm tired. Scully, what are you thinking? Um, sorry for ducking in and out. There are, like, seven Amber Alerts uh, went off on my phone, so that means they went off on my computer, too. So, hopefully no one heard the loud blaring. Um, but, yeah, you know what? This, this was a good match. Props to Kelly for hanging in there in round three. Um, Robert had a, you know, he had a couple stumbles there in round two. Um, but, you know, she was able to, again, rally in round three. 
and now he gets to play his buddy Jake for for, for the title. Um, so yeah, he's 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 probably going to put put in a better performance to beat Meltzer because Meltzer is just an absolute uh, stick of dynamite when it comes to this league. Um, he's he's one of the best to ever play. Um, so Robert's going to definitely have to put in the the hard work and the time and the effort to, that that is needed to beat someone of Jake's caliber. Right. Uh, and you know what? Robert has secured himself a position at Curtain Call, which is pretty messy for someone in their rookie season. So I look forward to that match. But that is it for me and Scully. Thank you for watching Open Night Trivia. Stay inside. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wash your face. Support local teachers. Get a fucking vaccine and a booster if you want it. Probably should get it anyways. Uh, we'll see you next week for some more trivia.